Hello everyone, Drip here. Alright, no hate to uh, Long, but I have a lot of disagreements with his video. He posted, you know, scaling Dragon Ball Heroes Goku. And I'm just gonna debunk all the arguments I disagree with in this video specifically. And as I said, no hate to the creator. And let's just get straight to the point. Now, firstly, it's important to establish what is canon to the story of Dragon Ball Heroes. After all, there are numerous games, manga, promotional animations, and other guides that are all contributing to the incredibly convoluted narrative, with plenty of contradictions throughout. So today, I'm going to mostly be focusing on the power scaling of the Dragon Ball Heroes manga series, due in part because I haven't seen many people talk about it, and because it is often able to go into more detail about certain aspects of the universe while covering essentially identical events to the games and promotional anime. Still, I will be using other sources as supporting material when there isn't enough information to go off of to fill the gaps where they matter. For those familiar with Dragon Ball Heroes, you may be aware that within the franchise and its narrative, there are essentially two different continuities, pre-god mission and post-god mission. If you want to understand what canon actually means in Dragon Ball, and why things like Dragon Ball Heroes, Kakarot, Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, and Legends, and basically every, you know, conceivable uh, official material is actually canon to the main continuity of Dragon Ball Super, then you should be watching this video. I don't know why you haven't watched this video. It's literally 30 minutes long. When you see a 30 minute long video talking about Dragon Ball canonicity, you should watch it if you're a Dragon Ball fan. It explains everything that you want and you need to understand about Dragon Ball's canonicity. And it is objective and non-debunkable essentially because everything i posted was fact and stated directly by the producers themselves you see in the first five years or so of dragon ball heroes the overall narrative of the game was a bit meta and disconnected as it was really only told through brief trailers and then the self-contained events within the game generally it was about a boy named beat playing a game called dragon ball heroes literally becoming a part of the narrative as his own created character um it still is long i hate to break it to you but that's still what the story is about it's still about a boy named beat entering the dragon ball world which is a video game so he basically uses an avatar to enter the world that's still what the story is about bruh if you've ever seen early ads for dragon ball heroes before the full promotional anime began you see a lot of recognizable faces until suddenly this random kid would show up and fight alongside goku that's beat Originally, most of the scaling of Dragon Ball Heroes came from this meta-narrative. You see, the initial story of Dragon Ball Heroes was that the villains were getting enough power to eventually take over the so-called real world, supposedly transcending their status as video game characters and interacting with a higher dimensional plane, and to some arguably makes them boundless. But this isn't true. The so-called real world in this early era of Dragon Ball Heroes is actually just one of the many future timelines that exist, meaning that it's not a higher dimensional plane or anything like that. What Long doesn't tell you because he didn't do enough research as regards Dragon Ball is that the Goku that's talking to Beat is not Xeno Goku or CC Goku. That's Goku from Beat's world. Beat's world isn't just a universe or a human world that transcends, you know, the entirety of Dragon Ball. Beat's world is a Dragon Ball verse in of itself. In Beat's world, there's also the Grand Priest. There's also Zeno. The Dragon Ball cosmology is stacked on top of itself. Essentially, the Dragon Ball characters that we see in Dragon Ball Heroes that belong to, you know, the main continuity are part of a game, right? They're not the true Goku and Vegeta. The Goku we know, the Vegeta we know, aren't the true Goku and Vegeta. There is a true version of Goku and Vegeta that exists in Beat's world, right? And those versions of Goku and Vegeta, and as well as the rest of the Z fighters and all the Dragon Ball characters, are worshipped as heroes in Beat's world. There is an entire Dragon Ball verse that transcends the Dragon Ball verse in Beat's world. Now, this is a topic for an entirely separate video as I will be making a completely separate video scaling Goku and talking about how all of these pieces of material affect the Dragon Ball cosmology, but just borderline, it is a higher plane of existence and it is a much, much higher plane of existence. Regardless though, this is no longer the main continuity of Dragon Ball Heroes anyway, so even if it did have that kind of scaling, it's no longer all that relevant to the current franchise as it is now. Well, so far, there is no evidence for that argument. He is quite literally created from Trunks' imagination, trying to think of the strongest person he could to protect space-time. Uh, Long, just because it's stated that she's calling the strongest warrior from Trunks' memories doesn't literally mean that she's creating Xeno Goku from his imagination. 
That makes absolutely no sense. She is the Supreme Kai of time. It makes far more sense that she uses her time powers to extract a version of Goku from one of the many variations or infinite timelines. Xeno Goku is from an actual existent timeline. He's from a timeline that is usually referred to as the Xeno Dimension, which basically Xeno just means foreign. The single most impressive feat that happens in all of Dragon Ball Heroes actually happens within the first arc of the manga, when the Demon King, Mechikabura, achieves his true form and completely absorbs all of Dragon Ball's history, plunging literally everything besides a small rock into a void of complete nothingness. Okay, so this is not the best feat in Dragon Ball, bro. What are you talking about? This feat doesn't even affect the crack of time, which literally views all the timelines as crystals. He's literally just absorbing the histories. The crack of time transcends these histories. This is nothing compared to the feat that Fu performed when he, in base form, went into the charisma world. And the charisma world is basically a realm that views Beat's world as fiction. Beat's world then views the fictional Japan as fiction. The fictional Japan then views the crack of time as well as everything below it including the dragon ball cosmology as fiction the easiest most non-complicated way to get dragon ball characters to outer versal is with the use of the instant transmission zone so basically the instant transmission zone is a realm where goku goes into whenever he uses instant transmission this instant transmission zone is actually the same realm that the Kais use when they use their special Kai Kai technique to teleport across the realms in the Dragon Ball cosmology. We know this because of GT as we see the Supreme Kai teleporting with GT Goku as Baby's attack hits them inside of instant transmission and then Goku falls into the Sugoroku space. This also ties into the fact that in the Chozenshu guidebook, it stated that the subspace, which is another name for the instant transmission realm, actually houses the Sugoroku space and the hyperbolic time chamber. The fact that it contains these dimensions like the hyperbolic time chamber and Sugoroku space is supported by the fact that in Dragon Ball GT, we see GT Goku state that it's a place between dimensions. And also in the same Dragon Ball GT, we see it being stated that the Sugoroku space is located in an area between dimensions. By area, it's referring to the fact that the Sugoroku space is located in a realm that is between dimensions of the hyperbolic time chamber and the sugoroku space let me make this make sense if you are a realm that transcends two infinite size universal constructs or just two universal constructs in general you would be technically between them at the same time encompassing them as a whole because if you hop outside of one of those dimensions you would be between one dimension and the other if that makes any sense like i said before this is exactly why goku fell into the sugoroku space while he was in the instant transmission zone because the sugoroku space is located inside the instant transmission zone now the thing about this instant transmission zone is that it's actually stated in the Chozenshu guidebook, which is in reference to the fight with Goku versus Cooler, when they were actually fighting inside of the realm, hopping in and out of it and back into the living world, that this realm actually transcends space and time. This actually supports the fact that it contains realms like the hyperbolic time chamber and the Sugoroku space, as it would have to transcend them in order to contain both realms, which is actually stated in the Chozenchu, as I mentioned before. But the thing is, is that not only is this realm stated within the Chozenchu to transcend space and time, which would immediately make it 5D by default, but with the context given in the Chozenchu, it's stated to have no concepts of space and time entirely implying that it lacks any form of dimensional magnitude but if it transcends space and time and lacks the concept of space and time that would mean that it's both superior to dimensionality while lacking dimensionality this falls under the category we know as outer versal in the tiering system as you cannot lack dimensionality while transcending dimensionality and not be outer versal it is something that is a logical necessity for outer versal to be the case
This also means that anyone who scales to or above instant transmission in any way moves at a certain level of speed known as a relevant speed. And then obviously you have realms like the Crack of Time, Beats World, the Charisma World that would scale above this, etc, etc, making them out of reversal by default because the affected realms that are even higher than this. Another good example is a Raleigh being able to go outside of the entire cosmology and being able to, you know, essentially scale above the cosmology and we know that the cosmology contains this realm and Goku in Super Saiyan Blue was able to go toe to toe with a Raleigh. So, yeah, that's an easy outer feat for even Super Goku, who is CC Goku by the way. As well as each Dragon Ball universe having its own cosmology that in itself contains multiple universe-sized structures within it from the other world to hell. People actually told me that you're a good guy, a chill guy when it comes to content creating and you basically don't know much about the power scaling so I'm not going to be aggressive towards you but bro at least do some research before saying things like this because not once in any guidebook was it ever stated that the uh, hell is the size of the universe. Not once was it stated that Otherworld is the size of the universe. Heaven is a universal-sized body contained within Otherworld. The universe in Dragon Ball has been stated on multiple occasions to be infinite in size. So if the Otherworld contains Heaven, it means Otherworld is a larger set of infinity that is above the lower set of infinity, which is Heaven. And again, you're kind of misusing the word Hell and Otherworld. Like... Hell is a part of Otherworld. Otherworld has three realms that compose it apart from heaven itself, which is the Kyle realm, the Enma realm, and hell. All three of those realms, as well as heaven being contained within it, make up the Otherworld. The Otherworld is it in its entirety. It's not just, you know, the Kyle realm or just the Enma realm. Everything is Otherworld. It is the next world, the afterlife. Otherworld was just a nickname given to it by Goku. It's actually the afterlife, and the afterlife contains hell, it contains heaven, it contains the realm of the gods and everything. So, no, Otherworld and Hell are not, you know, two separate things. This means that even destroying or absorbing one timeline would already justify a low multiverse level of power. Taking both the low and mid -end interpretations would put Mechigaburo's feet at multiversal level, while the high end puts him at either multiversal plus or low complex multiversal. If you want that in, like, dimensional terms, each individual Dragon Ball universe should be fourth dimensional on principle, as it contains arguably infinite 3D sized spaces, with each timeline arguably then encompassing each of these 4D structures, putting it in either infinite 4D or, as some people argue, fifth dimensional hyper time but i'll be honest i don't know metaphysics that well so i'll leave you guys to ultimately decide regardless of this mechi kabura is able to destroy an infinite number of these timelines completely encompass them and even absorb objects and spaces that view and treat these timelines as essentially two-dimensional objects this i think clearly puts him at either infinite 5d in power or within the sixth dimensional tier of power i personally don't really believe in any arguments for there being higher than 4d spaces within the main universe structure of dragon ball but if you want to say that because of coolers instant transmission or something that there are higher dimensional spaces within said timelines then you can just increase the dimensional tier by one once we get to the end of the video. I'm gonna preface this by saying again, this is no hate to Lonk as a creator, but just like many other creators, you don't believe these arguments because you don't want to believe it. You don't want to believe that Dragon Ball can be scaled above Outer Versal. It's kind of baffling to you and you want to dismiss it as something that is not possible. But it's very, very easy to explain. Given the aforementioned point about the instant transmission zone, it should be pretty easy to get Xeno Goku or CC Goku, who is essentially Super Goku, to outer versa with no problems whatsoever. Strength, speed is essentially irrelevant and immeasurable. They are stronger than characters who can travel through time with sheer speed and their attacks can travel throughout time by definition if they're encompassing timelines. So you did get their speed tiers correctly so i give you props on that but there is multiple things i want to address firstly you kind of implied that a relevant speed and a measurable speed are the same with the way you worded it with if it's not the way you intended it to be then that's fine but if it is then i'm gonna explain that a measurable speed and a relevant speed are completely different and i don't feel like explaining all that so i'll just drop my notes and my notes also explain why a measurable speed or a relevant speed, basically a measurable speed doesn't have anything to do with uh, time travel. Essentially, time travel doesn't grant you a measurable speed, even though 
the things that Dragon Ball characters do, like going to different timelines or different histories, would grant them a measurable to relevant speed because they, they are not actually time traveling. They're going to completely separate histories, which they would have to cross an insane distance to do. So in a sense, you are right, but conceptually, you are still a bit wrong. So I'll just leave my notes to explain all this to you. So essentially, these are all the notes and explanations I wrote down myself, so I'm sharing it with you so you can understand what these terms and these scaling tiers actually mean when it comes to, you know, just basic logic. So just uh, take these and feel free to pause to read. Lonk, I know you will see this video, and as a big creator, it's important for us to spread the right information and not mislead people. If you felt offended by anything I say in this video, I apologize. It was not intended to offend you. But that's basically my thoughts. And if you want to discuss with me about it, my Discord server will be pinned in the comment section below. Also, did you guys know I have a gaming channel? I bet some of you didn't know I actually have a gaming channel where I play Call of Duty Mobile. If you haven't subscribed to that channel, I don't know what you're doing on this channel. Even if you don't like Call of Duty, just go support that channel. It's completely free. It'll cost you nothing, but it means a lot to me. Also, guys, uh, this video was super low effort. Peace out.